now that we have uh, lots of light, we're going to be going to make sharp pictures rather than the pleasing blurs we made this morning. Generally, you want to have a shutter speed of at least a, a thousandth of a second, possibly two thousandth of a second. I apologize for all the noise in the background that the cranes are getting ready to leave. Although they're not exclusive to flight photography, they apply across the board to all of our photography, our picture style and white balance. For picture style, I keep things very simple by setting standard and leaving it. That makes everything much more consistent when I process my raw files in DPP. White balance is another story, and while it's possible to access it from the first red menu here, it's a lot simpler, boys and girls, to use the Q button, scroll to the white balance settings, and hit the set button to get a lineup of your choices. Probably 80%, maybe 90% of the time, I'm working in auto white balance. At sunrise and sunset, there are lots of times when I will go to my Kelvin setting. I usually keep it at about 8,000, so if we have some nice color, we can juice it up. Once in a while, I'll go to shade when I'm working in the shade. If your images look too blue, you can try shade. And on cloudy days, lots of folks like to work in cloudy. But for the most part, if you work in auto white balance, you can always change it after the fact in raw conversion. Here I have the Canon 300 millimeter f2.8 LIS2 with the new EOS 7D Mark II. And I want to go to back button focus. So I hit the Q button. I scroll to the camera symbol, hit the set button. The first button that comes up is shutter button half press, and I want to set that to metering only. I hit the set button, and then I go down to the star button, and I set that to autofocus, AF. So now I just focus by hitting the star button. I'd like to take a minute to review the principles of rear focus and its advantages. When I set my camera up for rear focus, remember I'm always in AI servo AF, and the shutter button only activates metering. I use the star button to activate focus. What I'm doing when I push the star button is setting focus. Once I release the button and recompose left, make the pictures, it's exactly the same. It's functioning exactly the same as if I had been using one shot AF. Now, if that same subject starts to fly, all I'll do is get the sensor on him as he's taking off, hold the star button and have AI Servo track the bird as it takes flight. So when I'm using rear button, I really have the best of both worlds. I have the equivalent of one shot. When I focus on the bird, release the shutter and recompose. And then I have AI Servo for tracking the bird takes flight or starts swimming by pushing and holding the AF button. So give it a try and I'm sure you'll like it with some practice. Canon in its AF configuration menu offers six custom cases. When I first got the camera and I looked at the six custom cases, I decided that I could do better for bird photography by adjusting the parameters exactly as I want them. So I went to case three, which is one that I rarely use. And for tracking sensitivity, I've set it to the slowest setting, minus. For acceleration deceleration tracking, I've set it to the highest setting, two, and for AF point auto switching, I've also set it to two. AF point auto switching only matters when you're using either 61 point or zone AF, and I use both of those frequently in different situations. When you've moved from one spot to another and you're sort of frantic, it's a good idea to take your time, buy the car, don't drop any of your gear, and change the settings that you need to by the trunk of the car, rather than running up there and shooting with all the wrong settings. So I've gotten uh, rid of 8,000K. I'm going to manual mode. I'm going to ISO 400. I know I'm going to be somewhere at about a 1600th at 5.6 or 2,000, so we'll set that. Better to take your time than drop your gear and screw up every picture. I have my limit range switch 
set to far distance. I have IS mode on, IS mode two. I keep that on all the time. And as far as exposure, in this early light, I'm reading one stop off the sky and setting it manually. So right now I'm at ISO 800 at a 2000th at F7.1. Well, that's about it for flight photography. Uh, some of the things you might wanna remember are to have your limit range switch set to far. You're more than welcome to try my custom settings that I use for case three. And you wanna be an AI servo all the time. And fast shutter speeds from at least about a 1600th of a second to a 2000th of a second or more. Uh, depth of field is not a big issue for flight photography. And uh, get out, find some flying birds, and have some fun.